bounced around. I was living in my truck. I was staying on people's porches. I, I had nowhere to go. My parents were divorced. You know, no one really cared what I was at. I was drinking. I was starting to use drugs, whatever. And, and it was uh, kind of a rough time in my life. So that's, that's where my foundation started for, for what caused some issues in my life. And what I'm going to do is go from there. I'm going to bounce up to my 20s, okay? I moved to California, um, went out there, developed a serious addiction, addiction issues. I was struggling with alcohol. Um, I'm just going to say this right now. I'm a drug addict. I'm an alcoholic. And this isn't an AA or NA meeting, so don't think I'm taking it that way. But I was a drug addict. I'm an alcoholic. Um, I was a liar. I was a cheater. I was, you know, was not a thief. But uh, I did all the bad things, but on top of it, I lived like a double life. I was still a good man. Um, and I went out there and I developed these problems, and I came back here with a bunch of issues. Ended up building two successful companies. Uh, well, the first one started off, I, I started a trucking company with $9,000 after my uncle died. And I built the thing up massive. I made $75 million, and I had no, had no structure where I was going, didn't know what I was doing. And uh, the addictions took everything and lost it. I lost everything. I ended up going from zero to hero basically overnight and didn't know what I was doing. I was struggling as being a father. I was struggling, struggling as, you know, just as an individual overall and, and it really sucked. It really did actually. Um, anyway, so I ended up going through, through that. I climbed back. I built another business. I had $200 in my, to my name. I started up another company. I built that one up. I turned two, $200 into $6 million in about nine months. And this time I'm clean. So you got you to put it in the timeline. I'm struggling. I'm up and down. I'm up and down. I'm on drugs. I'm on alcohol. Mainly, I couldn't live. I couldn't live a day to day without using something to get by to cope. And it was just, it was horrible. Anyway, so I built this company up, turned it into uh, another, another good company. I'm making a bunch of money. I decided I don't, the trucking's not for me. I want to get out of it. I started dating this girl. It was probably way too good for me. But um, I started dating her and ended up... Uh, relapsing again. Okay. So that's going to put me where I'm at November 23rd of 2014. Um, that's just a quick synopsis. I could be here all day if I talk to you guys about what was going on, but I walk into the Cunis group, which is, uh, Scotty Cunis is my friend and I go in there and I got a big burly beard. I'm looking gross. I'm, I need a job. They give me a job, right? I never sold cars. I never sold anything. I was upside down in my life. I was behind on my dreams, my goals, my desires, my passions, my fatherhood, everything I did, I sucked. And Scotty took a chance on me. And basically, overnight, as I did with everything in my life, I went from selling no cars to being a, not only the best salesman in the store, but the best salesman in the 12 groups to in the top 1% of the United States. I mean, the guys that might see me on Facebook, you guys see I'm selling a lot of cars every day. Um, so I, I do that. I do that immediately within the first six months of my career selling cars. And I'm sober. I put, I strung together some sobriety time. Next thing I know, I'm back using again. Somewhere about, it was like May 15th, May 18th of last year, I started using again. And I'm lying to everybody again. So everything that I built is coming to, coming to the end. They, Scotty Cunis puts me into a rehab. So here I am, 35 years old, building my life back again. They put me in, re in rehab. I'm such a great salesman, I talked myself out in 21 days. Or I don't know how long it was, but I think it was 21 days, not even to get some medical absence. I got out with a pass, come back to go to work that day or whatever, sitting around, and I relapsed in six hours. And I'm going, what, what am I doing? You know? So I go another three weeks, basically. I lose my job. I have no trust. Nobody cares for me. My brother wants nothing to do with me. I can't see my kid. I lost contact with my kid. My life is in shambles. I'm suicidal. I don't know what's going on. I, I don't know how I'm going to do anything with my life. How am I going to get this thing back? You know, um, all of a sudden I make a decision and, and that's kind of what I'm going to focus on with, with, as we get into this, I make a decision as I'm sitting on a beach in Florida that this isn't who I am and I'm not going to stay here and I'm done with it. July 27th was the last time I had a drink. I wasn't using any drink or drugs. I was completely off, and I'm now going to be working on nine months of sobriety here in a couple of days. So that <laughs> I 
and I, I can honestly say it's the, a legit nine months of sobriety. You know, like even when I put some time together before, I, I was like, I was using steroids. I mean, I always was cheating on something. I was tr always trying to do something to get the edge on life because I wanted it more and more because I was addicted to everything. So this is legit the first time I've done that. So I'm pretty stoked on it. Um, but anyway, so I, I basically put my life, you know, these kids got bright futures in front of them, which is amazing. Mine, I used up my time, but I believe that there's four pillars in my life that really get me to overcome this because I've been battling this for so long. Um, accomplish anything, basically, you know, accomplish anything, overcome barriers, believe in yourself, and work hard. Maybe not in that order, but it's like a cycle. So every single day of my life, I get up. And as she said, I do these motivational videos or whatever. I mean, some people think that they're lame or whatever, but I don't care. I put them out there. It's repetition, repetition. I'm putting them out there because it makes me feel good. It's accountability for me. All right. So I fully believe that if you can put these, a plan of action into helping somebody and bringing positivity into the world, I can, with just the same downward spiral of negativity that I put that much action into, I can switch it right into positivity. I can actually impact people's lives. Since I've been doing this now, I've been on this for 60, 60 days. I saved a girl from committing suicide. I've got girls that are, I mean, it's going on in our area right now that we live in. There's heroin, there's meth, there's coke, there's too much trinket. It's all right here, whether you guys believe it or not, it's here. And because I am who I am, they reach out to me and I'm able to stop, I'm helping stop that, that, the people from using. And that's probably the most rewarding thing that, that I have going for me right now. But like I said, how did I do that? I put an action plan together and I'm going to go out there and I truly believe that I'm going to change the life and I'm going to inspire people to, to quit or maybe slow down their drinking. And today, what I want to talk about is, is you guys. I mean, I don't know much about what the Rotary Club stands for or what it does. It's, it's all new to me. So, but I think it's kind of like my, we're all like-minded here. Maybe, you know, want to change the world or, or help people or make the community better. Right. I mean, am I wrong or is that the right, am I on the right page? So how can you guys in your life, I mean, some of us, we're all different ages here. How can you guys still impact the world? Cause you wouldn't be here if you didn't want to. What healthy habits can you put into your day? I mean, I'm kind of extreme. I put so much things into my day that I don't have a minute to, a minute to, to rest. I want to push, 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 push. But I think that if every single one of you guys can take, can take something from me, the fact that I'm here, I'm going to give hope to the hopeless. I'm talking this speech right now and I'm in about five hours I'm going to be talking to the jail. I go into the jail every Thursday night to help those guys. But how could you guys bring a little more value to the community we have? What could you guys do in your daily lives to help it? I mean, we don't want to, I mean, I'm sure you probably know kids in your school that are struggling, right? I mean, without telling the principal. I mean, I'm sure, <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I mean, you probably do too, you know? So when you, when you take this back, I mean, I, like I said, I didn't know how I was going to make how I was going to make anything fit into this message here with you guys because my message is not, it's a little bit raw. I could have went deeper and talked about it, but I don't want to depress everybody. I want everyone to know that with the belief in yourself and with a why, with a passion, with a purpose, you can overcome any, anything you want in your life and you can give back. Um, I recently got baptized here um, at Lakeland is where I go and my life has changed completely. Um, I, I, I don't know much about the Bible. I barely read it. I mean, I try to, but not going to get on that. The point is, I start doing these good, positive things. I surround myself with positive people who are doing better for me. And my life seems, seems to be just being way more abundant. I'm a better dad now. I, I'm, I'm, man, I can't really get girlfriends. I don't, I don't know why, but they, uh, <laughs> I can't keep one, I should say. So I, I don't want to talk about that. But yeah, I'm a better dad. I'm a better person. You know, I'm, I'm just overall, I mean, I, I'm good. Like I, I, life is good. So if there's anything I can give to you guys, to, I'm sure we all have some people in this family that are struggling with something. You need to give them permission to believe in themselves. You need to give them, you know, permission to believe that there's better out there, that they can bring more to the, more to the table, that life is worth living in this area that we live in. I mean, look at this place. Look at the, the lake right here. We live in one of the most beautiful places in the world. In my opinion, I think Wisconsin is the greatest in the summer. And it is happening around us. We do have homelessness. We do have all these things that, that need to be changed. And I want, to put, I want to put in the work to help change that. So I don't know how long you want me to talk. I could go on and on. But uh, I want you guys to think about it. You know, I challenge each and every one of you, where you're at in this room, to when you leave today, think about it. What can you do to change someone's life? 
all right, or, or what simple thing, even if it's a handshake or it's a smile or if it's any simple thing you can do. Maybe it's buying someone lunch. I don't know what the deal is, but if you can just do something, maybe it's in your own life. Maybe it's being a little more fit for your family. Maybe it's, maybe it's taking the dog for a walk. Maybe it's, I don't know, kissing your wife or her husband or whatever. Something to make someone's day better. It doesn't have to be crap, I guess, if you will. But I may not be the wealthiest man in the room right now, but I'm the richest in here in life because I'm grateful and I'm thankful. I'm truly blessed to be able to stand here and talk to you guys and be alive. So that's pretty much all I'm going to talk about today. I know you said you wanted to go 20 minutes, but... <laughs>